Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video I'll be going over the most common reason why a Whirlpool washer does not go into a final spin. And depending on the model that you have, maybe it's not agitating or draining either. The most common reason why this happens is because of a broken lid switch, which is typically located right over here, underneath the cabinet, or in the middle. There should be a little slot in here, which the lid striker, this little plastic piece right over here, is supposed to go into and depress the lid switch. So on a normal washer, you should be hearing a click when you put the lid down, like on the new switch. You hear that? But on mine, we are not hearing that, which means our door switch is broken, or the lid switch, I should say. And the most common reason why that happens is because people tend to let go of the lid and it slams down instead of just normally putting it down. And of course, the more you slam it, the more there's a chance that this thing is gonna break. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to replace this lid switch and share some helpful tips along the way. Now, I do wanna point out that there's a few different variations of this lid switch for Kenmore or Whirlpool or Roper washers the plug can be a little bit different. So do make sure that you order the right lid switch. And the way you go about doing that is by getting the model number of your washer, which is usually gonna be located under the lid switch, right over here, or it could be towards the front of the washer, also underneath the lid switch. Just look around for it, and once you get the model number, go to repairclinic.com, type in that model number, and search for the lid switch. And usually the prices on Repair Clinic are pretty high. So what I like to do is copy the part number and then search for it either in Amazon or eBay and find a better price deal. Once you get your new lid switch, you're ready to get to work. The very first thing you wanna do is make sure that the power is off, unplug your washer. And what I like to start with is pulling out the washer just slightly by opening the lid and pulling over here right in the front and just pull the washer out just a little bit. About like that. And then let's close our lid back up. And depending on what model you have of Whirlpool or Kenmore, you might have a screw in front here underneath this bezel, or you might have screws in the back, or you might need to get a putty knife and slide it underneath here to get this whole control panel to come up. On my particular model, these trim pieces on the side, they come off. You just pull the top and it should snap off and then just wiggle it off all the way. Gently, you don't wanna break this thing. And my screws are located in the front on the bottom. Let's take this side off as well. And once I get these two screws out, I'm gonna be able to flip this panel completely over. Once you have the screws out, you should be able to lift this whole panel up and sometimes it could be a little bit stiff, so just kind of push on it. So you're pulling up and towards yourself. There you go. It should snap out. There's these little clips or hooks that hook into these slots and you're trying to slide it out this way. And then we can simply flip this thing over like that and we have access to all of this, but mainly what we're after is this lid switch plug, which is right over here. Let's go ahead and unplug it by taking this little tab off on the bottom and just pulling on it. There we go, we got that unplugged. And then there's two tabs on either side of the plug that you have to depress and press down on to get this plug to go down. There you go. Let's push that in all the way. And now we're ready to proceed with replacing the door switch. And in this next part, I'm actually gonna take the whole cabinet body off because I think that's easier. But just so you know, you could do this without taking the whole body off if you're not comfortable doing so, just by reaching in under here 
and kind of working your way around and getting that thing off. And if you watch this whole video, you're gonna know how that thing is nested in there and you're gonna know where to take out the wires and where the plug is and where the screw is. So you should be good to go. Guys, and just so you know, this here is my favorite washer in the world. And not just mine, a lot of technicians. For one simple reason, most washers are really a pain in the butt to take apart, but this one, very easy. I'll show you why. On this Kenmore or Whirlpool model, all you have to do is take off these two clips and the whole body comes off. To do so, you need a flathead screwdriver, you slide it into the first slot, and you pull towards the washer, or towards the wall. And it comes out like that. You take off the other side as well. And now we're ready to take off the whole cabinet body. Next, we open the lid and put your foot on the bottom to hold the bottom of the cabinet and just pull towards yourself. Look at that. I love this. This is so convenient. As a guy that works on washers, I really, really appreciate this. And then you just slowly pull this thing out. And look at this, you have access to the drain pump, the motor, the transmission and everything. It's just all opened up. On most washers, this is not the case. It's always a pain in the butt to take them apart. But this video is not about that. Let's get back to our lid switch. What I like to do is close the lid and lay this thing down on its front. Just like that. And would you look at that? It looks like I'm not the first one here. If you're not sure what you're looking at, let me explain. See these two black wires that have been snipped off? Somebody basically bypassed this lid switch, which explained why this washer actually did go into a spin even though I saw that that lid switch is broken. So all they did was snipped off the two black wires and wire knotted them together to bypass this lid switch. That is not a recommended thing to do, if you do something like that, it's definitely only temporary. You do want to replace the switch and not leave it like this. But yeah, it looks like somebody was here before me and bypassed this thing. But if we look at our lid switch, look how it's all busted up. So let's go ahead and take this lid switch out. First, let's go ahead and take this ground screw out. It's a 5 16 And then there's a little clip that holds the sleeve where the wires are in. You're going to have to pull that clip up and pull that sleeve out. Just like that. And then there's one more clip over here. You can slide these wires out as well. And our whole lid switch is pretty much out. And the last thing you wanna do, which I actually should have done first before I even took the cabinet body off, is to take these two screws off on the top. They're just two Phillips screws. Okay, and now the old switch is completely out and it's in pretty bad shape. So we're gonna discard this and put in the new one. So now let's go ahead and put the new switch in the same way we took out the old one. So I'm gonna be putting these two side screws in, the two Phillips, in first. And what I like to do is move this a little bit away and put my screws in first. That way I can see them inside here and aim for the holes. And I just get them started by hand. That makes life a lot easier. After you get your first screw started, getting the second one started is even easier. And you can finish it off with a screwdriver or with a drill. If you're using a screw gun, make sure you have the torque setting set to very, very, very low so you don't strip anything out. Next, we can secure the ground screw, which was over here, using the same screw that we took out. I'm gonna tighten this one up by hand. 
Next, let's go ahead and slide this sleeve back under the clip. Just like that. I was able to do it with my finger, but sometimes that might be a bad idea or it's really stiff. You could just use a needle nose pliers to pull that out. So we got our sleeve in. We got to put our wires underneath the last clip. And last but not least, we got to put our plug back in right over here. There's a little notch over here on the bottom, so you can't put this in the wrong way. And now we're going to put the cabinet body back on. And to do that, we're going to have to slide the hooks, which are on the base, inside of these slots. There's one on this side, and there's one on this side. Same with the other side. And on this part, people sometimes make a mistake. The lip of the cabinet body is supposed to go under that black bar or the base supposed to go under it, not over it. Some people just place it right on top and then they really struggle trying to put this cabinet body back on. So half of the battle is to simply slide this thing, the white lip, underneath. Like that. After the bottom lip is in, you can just set this thing back down. And if you're lucky, those little hooks went into the slots right away. If you're not lucky, then one or two of them are still out and you have to just wiggle the cabinet until it goes back in. There you go. I think that one just went in. Now that the body is back in, let's go ahead and put our clips in. You put this side in first, you clip it in the back, then you push this side in, and last but not least, you take your flathead screwdriver again and press down in the front. And that goes in like that. Let's do the same exact thing on the other side. I use one hand to pull this in, I clip this. and use my flathead screwdriver to push it in all the way. Bam. And lastly, all we have to do is plug this plug back into here. Now, this is the part where if you ordered a wrong lid switch, this might not line up and it will not go in. If this is the case, you can either get the right switch or another workaround that is less recommended but possible is to simply snip this old female connector off and wire nut it to the new lid switch. That's also an option. Let's put our control panel back on. There you go. You just gotta get those white plastic hooks to hook back in there. It should be fairly snug. Put our two screws back in. Put the trim pieces back on, starting from the bottoms. And we're done. And to pat yourself on the back for a job well done, you can test it out by opening the lid switch and closing it back up. You should be hearing a nice click. Well guys, and that is how to replace a broken lid switch and get your Whirlpool washer or Kenmore washer to spin again. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me share a fun but harmless prank with you that you can pull on people. I used to be a waiter in an upper end senior facility. They had their own restaurant and everything. And once in a while I would do this prank. So a regular resident would come down and I would tell him, hey Sherry, we have a new drink on the menu. Would you like to try it? And she's like, oh yeah, what is it? And I'm like, it's a pine float. 
it's getting rave reviews. You absolutely have to try it. And she's like, oh yeah, sure, come on, bring it out. So I go in the kitchen, I grab the pine float, I set it down on the table, and I just walk away waiting for a reaction, which I get every single time.